works. It's uh, Sunday morning. I got a, uh, an Instagram from a guy talking about patellar tendonitis, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and show you how to fix this. And uh, we got Matt, Matty Ice. I can't figure out the ice, but uh, Matty Ice is a good cross, a hell of a crossfitter and a really good friend, so he's our cameraman today. Um, and he did some crazy strict press today with like 360 feet. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to show you to clear that out. The problem is the, uh, the patellar tendon, just so you have an idea, patellar tendonitis is really, really common. And 99% of the time, it's not because there's an issue here. This is a result of the issue upstream or downstream. So we're going to go ahead and clear out all that tissue, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The patellar tendon, so if you look at the quads, obviously quad four, there's four muscles come in. They encapsulate the, um, the, uh, the patella, so it's what's a big giant, giant what's called a sesamoid bump, encapsulates the patella and then attaches on this tiny little bump here called the uh, tibial tuberosity. Um, soccer players know exactly what this is because they get something called Oshkosh Schlatter's disease, which means this thing gets all big and giant from, uh, from all the explosive movements they're doing, the patellar tendon yanking on the, uh, on the tibia. Matt's on his head because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, I'm going to show you how to clear out this tendon, and then we're also going to clear out what's called the tibialis anterior. It's down here, the peroneals, and also underneath here. So I shouldn't be wearing knee sleeves, so I'll peel these off. But this is the back of the tibia right here where I'm running my thumb. And in behind here is a muscle called the flexor hallucis. It goes to the big toe, and it's really hard to get to. So I'm going to show you how to get to it with a ball, and also your thumb, and how to peel it out away from the bone and clear it out. What that's going to do is it's going to take a lot of pressure off the knee. So we're going to start, and then I'm going to show you a rehab exercise that's super killer that'll put a lot of uh, a lot more emphasis on the patellar tendon than on the quads themselves. So first things first, we're going to booty band that knee. So you know what? I'm going to pop this off. We'll just go with we'll just go without shoes. See if I can do that. So we're going to take, don't do this over a knee sleeve. So what you do is take the mobility band, okay? You're gonna make sure that you go above the knee. Normally, I don't trap the knee in this, but in this case, I'm gonna because I wanna keep that patella from dancing around. I wanna keep it in one spot as much as possible to emphasize stretching and relaxing the, uh, the patellar tendon instead of the tissue around here. We're gonna get this as well, but we're gonna grind most of this out and we're gonna really, really go through some range of motion. So you just take the booty band, give it, uh, give it a couple of good wraps. Remember what I always tell you, you want to be under full extension of the joint. Now I'm not wrapping it that tight just to show you guys so you kind of have an idea. So we're going to go all the way over the knee. Good. As a matter of fact, we got we to gotta pull this down lower. So you can see I started a little bit too high. So start a little lower. Good. This is why I love these candid camera models because they capture everything. See, I don't hide anything from you guys. So you start a little lower so you can get that tendon, and then maybe about an inch, half an inch to an inch on the band. And when I say pressure, you're using about 30% on the band itself. Come all the way around. I know you guys are looking at the top of my head and going, man, that guy's got an awesome bald head. Go all the way down. You can see I'm trapping the tendon here. Put your thumb behind here. So I'm gonna shoot my, put my thumb behind there. And then what that allows me to do is, I can tuck this in behind and it stays in place. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a box, I'm gonna bring my knee up. What I don't wanna see, and I'm gonna use this one, is I don't wanna see the knee coming out like this because I want that range of motion in that knee. So I'm gonna come straight up, I'm gonna get on the box, so you can see I'm making just over 90 degrees, and then I'm just gonna floss that out, in and out. So what I'm doing is I'm also hitting the MCL and the LCL on the outside of the knee, and the knee is what's transferring all the, the power, the horsepower we're generating in the hips, into the ground, so this is a really important joint. So we're just gonna be grinding away, and I can feel, oh man, that's gnarly. You do this after you work out, you really feel this stuff. Matt knows what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. So, you're gonna come all the way back and forth, and what I like to do is full range of motion. Remember, voodoo band works when you move. So go ahead and take a full range of motion, all the way in, all the way out, coming in, coming out. Do that for about three minutes. I'm not gonna make you guys sit here and watch me do this for three minutes since you guys got better things to do. But, once you do that, that's gonna break up a lot of that tissue. Now check this out. You guys have seen this before, but the quadriceps tendon starts right about here. This is the vastus medialis, the vastus lateralis. So there's a lot of tendon in here. This, get, this is called a super patellar pouch. This gets so gummed up. So we're gonna grind all the way through here, but I want you to come right down into the head of this vastus uh, medialis here. And what you do is you take this, it fits perfectly inside of 45. You're gonna take this, drop it in here, 
Make sure that you can get your leg off the box. You can see it's just enough for me. And then I'm gonna just find all my spots. And I'm just gonna kick out. And this is so incredibly painful. So that just tells you, <laughs> Matt's laughing right now because this hurts so freaking bad. And he knows because he comes to see me in my practice and I grind away on his tissue, so payback suck. So, and I'm doing this to myself, which is horrendous. So what I'm doing is I'm grinding away on that super patellar pouch and I want that full range of motion to get back to 90 degrees. So that's gonna take a lot of the pressure off upstream. Now we're gonna go downstream. This is where it's kind of important. You're gonna take this, put it on the box. I'm gonna be trapping the tibia. So the tibia is going right between the groove. So I'm gonna go this way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna have one leg off the box. I wanna get this right here where that tibial tuberosity is. And I'm gonna smash away on this and then I'm gonna run it. More pressure down the outside for the tibialis anterior, more pressure on the inside for that flexor hallucis down in here. And then I'm gonna show you how to get at this with your thumb too. That one's gonna make you say, ah, I promise you that. No pain face though, right? So we're gonna go all the way up and down here. So the way you do it is you can control the weight. This is the important part. So I come on here, my foot's hanging off the back side. So I'm like this. This one's so awesome because it's so freaking easy. Use some support and then just grind away on there. And what I'm gonna do is I'll turn this way so you can see my foot. No, I'm not showing my butt to the camera. But this way you can see what I'm doing. I'm turning my foot, bringing it in straight, coming on the inside. So I'm moving my foot around and I'm working my way up and down the shin. So I'm moving my foot around so I can capture all that tissue all the way up and down. So now I'm downstream. The way you're gonna do that last bit to get in behind here, to get that, uh, that flexor halicus, is get your foot on the corner of the box so your foot can hang off. Get your thumb right in behind that shin. So like I said, there's that tibia. You can come all the way up in here. You're gonna find a hot spot. So work your way down, down, down. So like for me, it's right there. And I guarantee you there'll be one on the other side where that coronial group is as well. And then just take your foot. Don't even do it. I don't want you flexing it. Use the other hand, get some pressure on there, and just peel it away. And I can't even look at the camera, it's so bad. You get in behind here, this is something, Matt's killing himself laughing. You get in behind here, this is stuff that never gets worked on, so you're just gonna grind away. But I mean, really drive your thumb in there. You can try using a ball, the contact's too broad. Use your thumb, that way you can engage it yourself. Now check this out, this is super cool. This is the rehab portion. So, imagine you have a shoe, okay, because I'm not gonna bother putting it back on. You're gonna come against the rig if you can, or even a doorway. You're gonna be about an inch and a half to two inches off. So when I'm in this position, it puts more emphasis on the patellar tendon than it does on the quad. You're gonna do this after you've smashed all this up. This is gonna be so ridiculously simple, it's easy to do, so it's easy not to do. All you're gonna do is you're gonna come forward and back. You can bring yourself nice and close. And I know we're shooting the knees forward and we're putting a sheer force on the knee. We're not dropping to the floor. We're just going down and up, putting a lot of, a lot of emphasis on this patellar tendon. And it's, there's very little weight, and if you need to control the weight because it hurts, hold on to the rig. But I want you at this 45 degree angle to put more emphasis on the tendon than on the quad because the quads are already strong enough. And a lot of times that's what's happening is the quads are really tight, so they're yanking on this. So we need to go upstream, loosen up the tissue here, loosen up the, like I said, the, uh, the tibialis anterior, the peroneal group, and that flexor halicus. Even the calf needs to be mobilized. We can smash out that calf as well. Get the quads moving. Get the, uh, the hamstrings, that's one other thing I wanted to concentrate on. So we'll do the hamstrings too. So the hamstrings, three groups or three muscles in the back, semimembranosis, semitendinosis, and biceps more. So when you come in here, you can see what's going on. I can trap all this tissue and I can do the same thing on the outside. Grab your trusty 45, start on the medial portion of all this stuff. And you're gonna start, in this case, you're gonna start really, really close to the knee, and you're gonna work your way back up towards the butt, okay? You will find a hot spot, trust me. All you guys out there that are thinking you don't have these spots, trust me, you do, I guarantee you, you do. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna grind away. If you wanna get even more, lean on it like, I'm not gonna stick my leg out. You're not gonna make me do it, I can tell you right now. Oh, and it's so awful. And all you're doing is peeling this stuff away, and I know because I need to do this. So you guys aren't the only ones that need to mobilize. So there we have it. So you go over all this stuff. This will help clear out that patellar tendon. Get a little uh, patellar reflux there when I hit that. I just noticed that. 
but it'll help clear out a lot of the pressure on this so your knees work right, knees work right, you can transfer all that power generated from those glutes when you're doing your squats and everything else, even just regular day-to-day -day living, that that tendon won't take all the abuse, you can actually transfer the power into the ground the way the knees are supposed to, remember. Not just a hinge, it's got that screw home mechanism too. So we do the um, super patellar pouch, do the hamstrings, lateral, medial, do the exercise. I'm Trev, Smashworks, Matt on the back, I'll see you guys tomorrow.